Welcome back. It's your man, Chris. Thanks so much for joining us. We have a phenomenal video for you today. Dave Smith and Tucker Carlson pull no punches in their treatment of the Clintons and the Obamas for their rank hypocrisy, trying to make you think that they're one of the little guys. This is awesome. Without any further ado, let's jump right in. Who does? It's like, oh, actually, you're defrauding. Michelle Obama of goes to Princeton for free yeah, and right. has been in the ruling class her whole life. Yeah. And she's still lecturing you about how she's a victim of racism. Hillary Clinton, exact same thing. Goes to Wellesley, spends her entire life in the ruling class, and she's still whining about how she's discriminated against. Why are they doing that? Yeah. And did you, you ever <laughs> see, um, they'll have like pictures of, uh, um, side by side, but it'll be like pictures of like uh, Jimmy Carter's house yes, and Obama's house. Exactly. And it, it totally represents something about the like corroding of our soul that you're like, we would allow people who call themselves public servants, which of course is ridiculous. They're not. But but still, they don't even have to pretend to keep up a facade of that. Like exactly. you get to live in this insane like mansion yeah. off what? Because you were president and you get to cash in on that now? In a white neighborhood, you should yeah, be required right. to live in well, the hood if you're if you're Barack Obama. and you, If you're and using you, that card. You yeah. use that card. You yeah. The only reason you got elected was yeah. because of your race. You spent your entire eight years inflaming race hate in our country. Yeah. And then you go to Martha's Vineyard, the whitest zip code in the world? Not allowed. Yeah. You Tucker pulls no punches. But it's not just the Obamas and the Clintons. It's all of the politicians. All the establishment class, global corruptocrat politicians. Maxine Waters doesn't even live in the district she represents. Same thing with Sheila Jackson Lee. Maxine Waters lives in a $4.5 million house in an uber white neighborhood. And yet she claims to represent her black district, her predominantly black and minority district. It's an utter joke. Smith and, and Tucker are on it. You're not allowed to do that. Well, it also, I mean, it did, it did so much damage his inflaming racial hatred. And, and and I'll say after, you know, Barack Obama's campaign in 2008, there, first of all, it was a, just leaving how you feel about the guy aside, it was a an amazing campaign. It was unlike anything was, that had ever been run before. It was before. genius. The, it yeah. was, yes, it was totally brilliant. It was um his, now, of course, it wasn't what they presented it as. <laughs> it wasn't like a grassroots <laughs> campaign. It was, he was approved of by the powers that be of he didn't course. He, he didn't just happen to as a junior senator get like a prime time speaking slot in 2004 where he gave that speech he but, wasn't even a senator yet was he a state senator still uh, at the I, time? I, I that's when i first yeah, you met be, barack right. obama yeah yeah walking okay. down the street smoking a cigarette in boston on my way to dinner at the palm i'll never forget it and i met him and jesse jackson jr they pulled over to say hi to me really and i'd never heard his name and i covered politics for a living right and he gave the keynote at the end of that week. That was Sunday night. He spoke on Thursday. And yeah, he was not a U.S. senator. Right. That was that was the campaign. It and was great. It was absolutely so, crazy. So, okay, so it was clearly kind of orchestrated. It was a brilliant campaign, but he was clearly installed as the candidate. It was absolutely not grassroots. They're, they're absolutely right. This is just amazing. Oh, by yeah, some powerful by people. the Pritzker family, of but course. His, but listen, his, the speeches that he gave and much of the message, first off, I actually, there's probably a lot of things that I would have agreed with him that he was running on. Um, I agreed with a lot of things George W. Bush ran on in the year 2000. Well, I'll tell you they, what I agreed turned with. around and didn't govern like that at all. Let, let's sort of like elect the black guy and get past the race stuff. I loved that. Well, especially because that was his message. That was his time. message. And like, I, let's get past the race. Stuff. I love that. He goes, oh, and, and even, and yeah. there was a broader, more unifying thing. I mean, I remember the, cause he was such a powerful, you know, like public speaker. I mean, he never really said anything, but it, it would still be beautiful. The way, you know, yes. like, I remember in his uh, acceptance speech at 2008 at the DNC, we had this whole line where he was like a, he was like, I love this country, and so do you, and so does John McCain. The men and women who have fought for this oh. country have been Republicans and Democrats and independents, but they fought together and died together, not defending a red America or a blue America, the United States of America. And, just like, ah, and then it's like, oh, what a, I mean, he didn't really say anything there, but you know, the, but it was beautifully put. I'm 100% the was, for that. Yeah, the message was great. And, great and look, he also was uh, very critical of the George W. Bush yes. administration's excesses, and I'm going to end the war in Iraq, I'm going to re institute habeas corpus. We're going to end torture. We're going to, there were a lot of, no, he didn't do any of that. Um, I mean, I guess. No, he didn't do any of that. Everything he campaigned on, he did nothing of it. He was not a uniter. He was a divider. He didn't end the war in Iraq. He didn't close Guantanamo Bay. Everything was an utter lie. It was a complete scam. It was as if it was a play acted campaign. It was a stage act. Once he got into office, it was 100% completely different.
I guess he ended the war in Iraq eventually and then reinvaded the country because uh, the ISIS fighters he was arming invaded the country. And so, but, but then I think essentially what happened, uh, and it was around Obama's re-election campaign, this is where things really went off the rails in this country, was that he got in there and continued and expanded all the worst of the Bush policies. Oh, of course. And so they almost had nothing to run on. And so they decided to pivot to a culture war. Still live in fear as we go to the grocery store or worry about walking our, our dogs, walking our dogs or allowing our children to get a license. I mean, just imagine. Aren't your girls right driving? Now, they're driving. Yeah. But every time they get in a car by themselves, I worry about what assumption is being made by somebody who doesn't know everything about them. The fact that they are good students and polite girls, but maybe they're playing their music a little loud. Maybe somebody. Mm -hmm. When are your girls ever by themselves? You have 24-7 secret service protection for your entire family, Michelle Obama. When are your girls ever alone? They're not. They have secret service protection. Probably people opening their doors for it. It's, it's ridiculous. This, this pandering to nonsense when they are clearly not living the same life as everybody else lives. Beyond their secret service protection, the fact that they're worth hundreds of millions of dollars because what? Because he was a senator for one term and president for two terms. Suddenly they went from regular Americans to worth a hundred plus million dollars. That's just utter corruption. And that's not just Obama. That's all of these politicians. They've all been laundering money, laundering U.S. taxpayer money through places like Ukraine and other endless wars that we've got. This is just wow. Everybody sees the back of their head mm -hmm. and makes an assumption. I, like so many parents of black kids, have to, that the, whole, the, the, the innocent act of getting a license mm -hmm. puts fear in our hearts. Um, so I, th I think we have to talk about it more and we have to ask our, our fellow citizens to listen a bit more mm -hmm. and to believe us yes. <laughs> and to know we don't want to be out there marching. I mean, all those Black Lives Matters kids, they'd rather not have to worry about this. They're taken to the streets because they have to. They're trying to have people understand that, that we're real folks. And the I have two black girls, adopted two black daughters. They are absolutely gorgeous. Maybe when they become teenagers, I'll have, I think about it now, I have no fear of them getting a license and getting behind the wheel of a car other than the other idiot drivers out there who might run into them or them not having the self-control of a 25 or a 26 year old and doing something stupid in the car. I don't fear for them because of somebody looking at the back of their head or because of a police officer. Absolutely not. This is just utter rank nonsense. The fear that many have of so many of us is irrational and it's based on a history that is just, it's sad and it's dark and it's time for us to move beyond that. Investigation, because I want to know which nanny, which chef, which, which housekeeper, which chauffeur, which secret service agent, which gardener, which landscaper is oppressing Michelle Obama, Barack Obama and their children. I think we've got to get to the bottom of it at this point. I mean, I looked and it looks like her net worth is about 40, 70 million dollars. Gail King's is 40 million dollars. Barack Obama and her combined is $135 million. Let me tell you something. If that's oppression, where can I get me some? I mean, the back of people can look at the back of their head. You mean the secret service agents that are constantly <laughs> around your children? They probably haven't even touched their own door handles in years. And we're supposed to believe that you're oppressed while the rest of the country is actually suffering. Please, Michelle Obama, give some of that oppression to the rest of America because we sure could use it. Oh, I love that. Yes. Give me some of that. Get me some of that oppression. Give me some of that $100 million, 24-7 security, I don't touch my own door oppression. Would love some of that. She brings the fire all the time. She is just awesome. Haven't touched their door handles in here, so I'm stealing that. Why? I notice a theme here. There are a lot of extremely rich people who are deeply miserable and desperate to have you believe they're victims. What is that? 
Yeah, it's great. I mean, Le to me. <laughs> LeBron James living in Bel Air, he's a victim. Meghan Markle went downgraded from billionaire to multimillionaire. She's a victim. They want you to know that they're all victims. It's because they're trying to distract us. The truth is that they view us as peasants. They, they're trying to make it seem like, hey, when the peasants turn against us because they're actually robbing all of them, we don't want them to look at us. We want to make yeah. them think that we're one of us. They're not one of us. They're nothing like us. They don't live like us. She has nothing that goes on in her life that is similar to the average American, yet she keeps trying to use her skin color and her complexion as a way to make people believe that she's suffering and she's absolutely not suffering and everyone should be aware that if you're watching this and you think that LeBron James and Meghan Markle and Barack Obama and Michelle Obama are oppressed you are a fool you have been fooled they are doing just fine Candace Owens brings the heat every time and she does it with a flair of humor that's just awesome but she's so correct this thing is just a testament to the fact that there is we have, we have somehow created in the United States of America what our founders fought a revolutionary war, spilled blood to get away from. And that is an establishment ruling class that is always an establishment ruling class. Just look at the Bush family, George H.W. to George W. to Jeb. This idea, that's why, that's why the founders in the Constitution said there is no monarchy. There are no titles. There is nothing akin to royalty. The idea was somebody would step up, they would serve in public office as a representative or a senator or even the president of the United States. And when they were done, they would go back to being a regular citizen. Well, we've changed all that now. Now we've added 24 by 7 secret service for all former presidents and even a lot of former politicians. And now you've got this globalist cabal of corruptocrats, the establishment that now runs 99% of Washington. And they're all nepotistic. They all bring in their family members, their friends, and it just becomes a revolving door of I scratch your back, you scratch mine, and they never leave. And that's how Congress, that's how AOC ends up being worth $29 million after what, six years in Congress? Is it six? $29 million? That's how Nancy Pelosi's estimated net worth of hundreds of millions of dollars? Because these people inside her trade, and Candace is exactly right, they think of you and I as peasants because they want to recreate the European monarchy here in the United States. They want to rope us in to the new world order monarchy where they are the permanent ruling class and we are the permanent serfs. They want a world like this. They want a globalist government that is always entrenched. It's always the same people. It's their ruling class and everybody else is a slave. That's their goal. Look at the WEF, the World Economic Forum. They want us to own nothing, eat bugs, have no freedom of movement because you either, either have an electric car that can only go so far and they can shut it off or you have a bicycle. This is their goal. This is what they want because they want all the money and all the power. And that's why Obama and Clinton, even though they played the race card, Sheila Jackson Lee and Maxine Waters, they play the race card. They don't live like their constituents. They don't even come close. You got to wake up and realize you've been scammed. You've been scammed out of the legacy that our founders tried to leave us, which was a 100% free society that was governed by civil servants, people who stepped in for a temporary time to serve the nation. And they have been replaced by this quasi-permanent ruling class that gets rich by scamming us out of tax money, laundering tax money, insider trading. And then there's the ultimate, there's the two-tier justice system. Rules for thee, but not for me. Anybody else insider trades, check out Martha. I forget her last name. She got sent to prison for insider trading. Anybody else insider trades, they go to prison. Sam Bankman free, he gets caught defrauding people, he goes to prison. Politicians get caught defrauding people? Oh, it's just par for the course. Wake up, America. You've been scammed. Man, I love it when she brings the heat. That was awesome. Hey, I would like to know what you think. What do you think of Candace? What do you think of the Obama presidency? When you look back, is it the hope and change that was promised or was it division and chaos? I would love to know. Let me know in the comments. Please like, smash the like button, subscribe, turn on notifications, share this channel everywhere you get as we try to bust out of the YouTube algorithm. Thank you so much for joining. Remember that God is good and he is sovereign and it'll all be good in the end. It's not yet good. It's not yet the end. Till I catch you next time.